Hello Year 3 to Year 6, it's Story of the Day time and we have a new book. We have got Roald Dahl's George's Marvellous Medicine. So I'm going to read the blurb for you on the back so you've got a bit of an insight into what the story's about. Most grandmas are kind and helpful, ladies, but not George's grandma. She's a grumpy, grizzly old grouch and George wants to teach her a lesson. So, when it's time for her medicine, George concocts a bubbling, frothing, marvellous mixture, which is guaranteed to send her through the roof. Introducing George Cranky, Mr Killy Cranky, Grandma and Mrs Cranky. Warning to readers, do not try to make George's marvellous medicine yourselves at home. It could be dangerous. I'm going shopping in the village, George's mother said on Saturday morning. So be a good boy and don't get up to mischief. This was a silly thing to say to a boy at any time. It immediately made him wonder what sort of mischief he could get up to. I wonder if somebody at home ever says that to you, don't get up to mischief. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock, the mother said. Then out she went, closing the back door behind her. Grandma, who was dozing in her chair by the window, opened one wicked eye and said, Now you heard what your mother said, George. Don't forget my medicine. No, Grandma, George said. And just try and behave yourself for a while. Yes, Grandma, George said. George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or a sister. His father was a farmer and the farm they lived on was miles away from anywhere. So there were never any children to play with. He was tired of staring at pigs and hens and cows and sheep. He was especially tired of having to live in the same house as the grizzly old grunion, his grandma. Looking after her all by himself was hardly the most exciting way to spend a Saturday morning. You can make me a nice cup of tea for a start, Grandma said to George. That'll keep you out of mischief for a few minutes. Yes, Grandma, George said. George couldn't help disliking Grandma. She was a selfish, grumpy old woman. She had pale brown teeth and a small puckered mouth like a dog's bottom. Now, how much sugar in your tea today? George asked his Grandma. One spoon! she said, and no milk. Most grandmothers are lovely, kind, helpful old ladies, but not this one. She spent all day, every day, sitting in her chair by the window, and she was always complaining, grumping and grouching, grumbling and griping about something or another. Never once, even on her best days, had she smiled at George and said, how are you this morning, George? Or, why don't you and I play a game of snakes and ladders? Or, how was school today? She didn't seem to care about other people, only herself. She was a miserable old grouch. George went into the kitchen and made Grandma a cup of tea with a tea bag. He put one spoon of sugar in it and no milk. He stirred the sugar well and carried the cup to the living room. Grandma sipped the tea. It's not sweet enough, she said. Put more sugar in. George took the cup back to the kitchen and added another spoonful of sugar. He stirred it and carried it carefully to Grandma the saucer she said I won't have a cup without a saucer George fetched her a saucer and what about a teaspoon I've stirred it for you grandma I've stirred it well I'll stir my own tea thank you very much she said fetch me a teaspoon George fetched a teaspoon when George's mother or father at home grandma never ordered George about like this it was only when she had him on her own that she began treating him badly. I don't know what's the matter with you, the old woman said, staring at George over the rim of the teacup with those bright, wicked little eyes. You're growing too fast. Boys who grow too fast become stupid and lazy. But I can't help if I'm growing fast, George said. Of course you can, she snapped. Growing is a nasty child habit. But we have to grow, Grandma. If we didn't grow, we'd never be grown-ups. Rubbish boy, she said. Look at me. Am I growing? Certainly not. But you did once, Grandma. 
only very little, the woman answered. I gave up growing when I was extremely small, along with the other nasty childish habits, like laziness and disobedience and greed and sloppiness and untidiness and stupidity. Have You haven't given up any of these things, have you? I am still only a little boy, Grandma. You're eight years old, she snapped. That's old enough to know better. If you don't stop growing, soon it'll be too late. Too late for what, Grandma? It's ridiculous, she went on. You're nearly as tall as me already. George took a good look at Grandma. She was certainly a very tiny person. Her legs were so short she had to have a footstool to put her feet on and her head only came halfway up the back of her armchair. Daddy says it's fine for a man to be tall, George said. Don't listen to your daddy, Grandma said. Listen to me. But how do I stop myself growing, George asked her. Eat less chocolate. Does chocolate make you grow? It makes you grow the wrong way, she snapped. Up instead of down. Grandma sipped some tea, but never took her eyes from the little boy who stood before her. Never grow up, she said. Always down. Yes, Grandma. And stop eating chocolate. Eat cabbage instead. Cabbage? Oh, I don't like cabbage, George said. It's not what you like or don't like, Grandma snapped. It's what's good for you, and that's what counts. From now on, you must eat cabbage three times a day. Mountains of cabbage. And, it's, and if it's got caterpillars in, so much the better. Ugh, George said. Caterpillars give you brains, the old woman said. Mum washes them down the sink, George said. Mum is as daft as you are, Grandma said. Cabbage doesn't taste of anything without a few bored caterpillars in it, and slugs too. Not slugs, George cried out. I couldn't eat slugs. Whenever I see a, a live slug on a piece of lettuce, Grandma said, I gobble it up, quick, before it crawls away. Delicious! <laughs> She squeezed her lips tight together so that her mouth became a tiny wrinkled home. Delicious, she said again. <coughs> Worms and slugs and beetly bugs. You don't know what's good for you. You must be joking, Grandma. I never joke, she said. Beetles are perhaps the best of all. They go crunch. Grandma, that's beastly. The old hag grinned, showing those pale brown teeth. Sometimes, if you're lucky, she said, you get a beetle inside the stem of a stick of celery. That's what I like. Grandma, how could you? You can find all sorts of nice things in raw celery, the old woman went on. Sometimes it's earwigs. Oh, I don't want to hear about that, cried George. A big fat earwig is very tasty, Grandma said, licking her lips. But you've got to be quick, my dear. When you put one of those in your mouth, it has a sharp pair of nippers on its back end and it grabs your tongue with those. It never lets go. So you've got to bite the earwig first, chop, chop, before it bites you. George started edging towards the door. He wanted to get as far away as possible from the filthy old woman. You're trying to get away from me, aren't you? She said, pointing the finger straight at George's face. You're trying to get away from Grandma. George stood by the chair, door staring at the old hag in the chair. She stared back at him. Could it be, George wondered, that she was a witch? He'd always thought the witches were only in fairy tales, but now he was not so sure. Come closer to me, little boy, she said, beckoning him with a horny finger. Come closer to me and I will tell you secrets. George didn't move. Grandma didn't move either. I know a great many secrets, she said, and suddenly she smiled. It was a thin, icy smile, the kind a snake might make just before it bites you. Come over here to Grandma, and she'll whisper secrets to you. George took a step backwards, edging closer to the door. You mustn't be frightened of your old Grandma, she said, smiling that icy smile. George took another step backwards. Some of us, she said, and all at once she was leaning forward in her chair and whispering in a throaty sort of voice that George had never heard her use before. Some of us, she said, have magic powers. 
that can twist the creatures of this earth into wondrous shapes. A tingle of electricity flashed down the length of George's spine. He began to feel frightened. Some of us, the old one went on, have fire on our tongues and sparks in our bellies and wizardry in the tips of our fingers. Some of us know secrets that would make your hair stand straight in the end and your eyes pop out of their sockets. George wanted to run away, but his feet seemed stuck to the floor. We know how to make your nails drop off and your teeth grow out and of your fingers instead. George began to tremble. It was her face that frightened him the most. That frosty smile, the brilliant unblinking eye. We know how to have you wake up in the morning with a long tail coming out from behind you. Stop it! He cried out. Stop! We all know secrets, my dear, about dark places where dark things live and squirm and slither all out of each other. George made a dive for the door. It doesn't matter how far you run, he heard her saying. You won't ever get away. George ran to the kitchen, slamming the door behind him. And tomorrow we'll pick up at chapter two, The Marvellous Plan.